Now to look at us, you know, we are a handsome looking group of people. We are a nicely dressed and groomed crowd here. We are a certain class of people nobody would ever guess that inside, each one of us knows that we are broken and we are sinful and we are outcast and we know what it is to be rejected and pushed aside. So we naturally associate with those people whom the scribes and the Pharisees did not love or respect or appreciate, but Jesus sure did. And I know what you feel inside, in spite of how you look outwardly, I know what is in your heart. I know because whenever I ask Presbyterians, no matter how upright or good they are, I say, what's your favorite passage? They always come back with all those passages that are about Jesus loving the outcast. I think the number one answer I get when I ask the most upstanding Presbyterian, what passage of scripture do you really love? Do you know what it is? It's the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John where they bring to Jesus the woman taken in adultery and they say the law is clear. She must be stoned to death. And you can't argue with it. Leviticus 12, if you're taken in adultery and you're a woman, you're stoned to death. If you're a man, you get a slap on the wrist, but that's a whole other thing. You can't argue. And Jesus said to those people who were lined up with their stones, go ahead, stone her to death. I won't stop you. And they picked up their stones. And they were ready. Until Jesus said one more thing. Before you do it. One more thing. Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And everybody loves to hear those words. Because every one of us knows that the day is coming for us when our accusers will line up against us and we will not have a leg to stand on. We are worthy of death and the only hope we have is if the Son of God will come forward and say, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. The last verse after that says, and one by one, the scribes and the Pharisees walked away, the oldest first. I love that because it means that the guy who was the oldest and the most wise and the most experienced, he was the first to recognize the truth and the power of what Jesus had to say. And all of us associate with the woman taken in adultery, no matter who we are. We love it. And the other stories we love, the healing of blind Bartimaeus, because the respectable people were pushing Jesus along the road outside of Jericho. They did not want him to hear the whining and the moaning of this outcast, crying out, Son of David! Son of David! Help me! Jesus pushed the respectable people aside and he went over to see Bartimaeus. And you know what the saddest thing with Bartimaeus was? We don't even know his name. And you say, well, his name was Bartimaeus. No, Bartimaeus isn't a name. Bartimaeus just means son of Timaeus. He was nothing. He was nobody. He was a reject, an outcast, a sinner without even a name. But Jesus went to him and said, My child, what do you want me to do for you? Give me back my sight, son of David. And Jesus said, Your faith has made you well. And he was healed. And we love it. Because he was a real 
reject, but Jesus opened up his heart. And all the other places where Jesus opens his arms to the people who were crushed. Maybe the number one answer when I say, what is your story? What is your story in the New Testament that brings you hope? The one where Jesus was teaching his disciples and the scribes and the Pharisees and some of the women brought little children and the leaders gathered around and said, get those little brats away from here. We've got important business to do. Jesus rebuked his disciples and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and do not prevent them for all such is the kingdom of God. And unless you become like one of these little children, you shall not enter therein. And I know people who are 80 years old and 90 years old and 100 years old and they love the story. Suffer the little children. Because inside of them. Still a little child. Who knows what it is to be pushed aside. And rejected. And they crave the words of God. The creator of the universe. Who says don't you dare push anyone away from me. When he cleansed the temple, drove out the money changers. Do you read the last verse in that story? When the space was cleared out and the money changers were gone, the Bible says that the lame and the crippled and the foreigners and the widows came into the temple and the little children came in shouting, Hallelujah! Shouting in the temple. And that's the way that it should be. And every time I see the children coming into this sanctuary on a Sunday morning, I am back in the Gentiles' court, in the temple where Jesus threw out the money changers. And I see them coming in. And it is all that I can do to not weep for joy. Children come in. We love those stories. We love the stories of the lepers and the story of Zacchaeus and all the outcast people, all the unrespected people. And Jesus opens up his arms. And I want you to know this. That the reason why you love those stories and the power that is in those stories is the power of the universe and it is the power that will change you because when you recognize your sin and brokenness and you crave his mercy and forgiveness, the spirit comes in and you are a new creation and that is the power that will also change the whole world and that's the power about which this table is.